and the psalm reading. Uh, I would have liked to speak on that, but I think I have to be faithful to share what else the Lord put on my heart also. But just one word, and that is uh, that which was spoken that people who were coming close to Jesus in the mount, on the mountain, as opposed to the Old Testament. We read in Hebrews that come boldly to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Amen. The word is added boldly. See, only the high priest could go to the throne of grace. And that only once a year. Now we are saying, Jesus died. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, there is much to say about and rejoice about all these things. So I am very thankful for the words you shared, brother. That psalm was dear to my heart for many, is dear to my heart for many years. And it's good to read it over and over again, Psalm 5. I want to add, I want to share a, word, a brief word of testimony that, um, that um, to know what we are in Christ and more specifically what your calling is in Christ and to confess that with our mouth. In prayer and before witnesses is the will of God. Amen. See, when I was very, very young, the Lord put into my heart a love for God's word. That is all I have till this day. Though <coughs> I went to college and spent many years in professional studies and work. All those years, my first love and my last love was the work. Uh, very briefly, the Lord gave me opportunities all through my life, from student days, to share the work. For the past 41 years, I live in Ohio, in a small town, but the Lord brought people there from the neighborhood. And by the grace of God, I have been sharing God's word two or three times or more every week in the little church that we are there. So I have this word of encouragement to tell every one of you. Like that brother said, if anyone would take time to spend time with God, even a short time, but with all your heart, even if it's five minutes, ten minutes, one hour, if it is invested in a way that you are there, as Jesus said, go in your closet, close the door. You know, dear ones, that is the most holy place. And what happens there when you do that, again, as a testimony, Psalm 25, verse... Psalm 25, verse 14. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. Yeah. The Lord's secret, that is how it is written. Yes. Confides. Yes. His sweet and intimate fellowship, that is how it is paraphrased. 
and to those who are young, I should add this quick word also that, uh, for example, when you have testimony time. See, I encourage people who work with me, even last month a young sister started coming to our church there. She asked me whether I have any suggestion for studying the Word of God. She is in her 20s. So there, there is much written about that, how to study the Bible. But I will tell you what I have experienced. Basic, preliminary, there are most detailed ways of studying. I am not contradicting that. But to every one of us, very simple, not, you don't have to be a preacher or a teacher. When you, I, when, at least every month or once a month, if you can, or every week, take one passage of the scripture like Psalm 5. Say, this week, let me meditate on Psalm 5. For my part, this week, I am going to meditate on Isaiah 12. And there is a reason for that. So, if God would put in your, on your heart a, a passage, focus on that that week. You don't have to have dictionaries, you don't have to have references, though you may. But simple, even a busy housewife, a busy uh, office worker, then you, if you meditate on that, what will happen is, again I am giving you my testimony, if you meditate on that, what will happen is, the living waters will begin to come to you. Jesus said, the words I have spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. That is what happens when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. God's word keeps coming. God's word keeps coming. Then, I told the sister, you can take one small chapter or small passage and study, meditate, and then share it with someone, with a friend, or write an email to someone about one verse. See, this is what I do. And then what happens is, when the time comes, you are here for testimony time. Then testimony time is not just for saying that, Lord healed me, the Lord answered me. We need that. But it is to give a word Amen. that you have tasted, which can be done in one minute. Mm -hmm. Even just reading a scripture. And I want to tell you, if we will all do that, it will be an amazing experience. The Lord will use you, when I go to the grocery store to buy grocery once a week, very often I meet someone there. And the Lord opens the door for me to communicate with that person. It doesn't have to be the pulpit. Jesus had never had any pulpit, other than maybe the mountain. <laughs> And he spoke by the roadside, and when he walked by the roadside, he saw these poor people, burden, come unto me, come unto me, I will give you rest. See, that is the gospel, that is the prophetic ministry. Amen. And when Peter spoke, the first day after the Holy Ghost came, Acts chapter 2, the, the long message he spoke <coughs> probably took less than 10 minutes. See, I have already spoken more than 10 minutes. So we don't have to have a long speech to give an utterance given by the Holy Spirit. That is what is, that is in the heart of the revival. But Satan is against that. Though I, I may say it is very simple, it doesn't work out easy always, you know. But the Lord is calling us to that. See, the scripture I have on my heart, going directly to that. So, I, concluding what I said, if you focus on one passage in one week, I do that with my grandchildren. I go over one chapter with them in one month. Recently, I started that. This month, February, last month, I was going over Proverbs chapter 3. I talked to them on the phone and I encourage them to read that over and over, that one month, see? Th these are simple things which will lay a foundation on your personal life. 
and to equip you quickly for the ministry of the Word. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, even if you don't have a preaching uh, assignment in the church, and the Lord uses you everywhere. Amen. As they are. Paul said, instant in season and out of season. Let us believe God together. See, I may not see you for another year, but I have told you my heart within few minutes. The, this learning, what I said, is the learning that is necessary for the daily ministry in the church. And it is written, exhort one another daily. Do you remember that? Exhort one another daily. So the preaching is not only Sunday morning. How do we do that? Oh, I wish I had time to talk about that. I will cut myself short there. <coughs> Lord, is there someone to exhort me today? Is someone there I can say a word of comfort today to someone? Or send a text or an email? See, this is our life. Yeah, I, I will give that water bottle. It is on the floor there. Yeah. Yeah. So, are, are you, anyone excited about what I said so far? So, <laughs> that is the Bible school we all can go to. I have been in that Bible school for nearly 50, uh, 70 years. That Bible school doesn't graduate. <laughs> so, I have to continue there. This is true, dear ones. This is true. Yes. The word disciple means, try to remember this, the word disciple means student. And people call Jesus teacher. See, when Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene after the resurrection, remember that? He appeared first to a poor woman. And then, when he called her by her name, she suddenly recognized the Lord. Before, woman, why are you crying? She did not recognize him. But as soon as he called her Mary, she recognized him. And then, uh, and then, Yeah, I, 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 I forget exactly what I had in mind to say about that. Once he, he recognized him. Uh, eh? Yeah, yeah, that was what I, thank you. Yeah, the, the way she addressed him was a teacher. See, teacher. So the Holy Spirit is the teacher also, see. Amen. Jesus said, I will send you another comforter. Implying himself was one comforter. And Holy Spirit. So we are the, the Lord Jesus to teach us all the time. And the Holy Spirit to teach us all the time. Seventy years of Bible school at least for me, you know. If I started at ten, you know. So who wants to go to that Bible school? You, you, get, you can enroll today. <laughs> and and uh, dear ones, there is no, <coughs> I have no greater joy than sharing the Buddha. I don't need any money at all. I decided that when I was very young. <coughs> My father taught me that. I mean it with all my heart. I have all the money I need. But I did not make it. <coughs> there, is, there are scriptures that say precisely that. But I won't go there now. So, the Lord bless you this morning. You have blessed me. Last time when I was here, this time. And uh, the word I have on my heart to share with you is this, uh, Colossians chapter 2. Yeah, bless the Lord. Colossians chapter 2. Verse 
for I would that he knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. That, please note that verse 2. That verse 2 is the word I have on my heart for you to kindly remember. Verse 2. That their hearts might be comforted. Some translations would say their hearts might be encouraged. Comforted. Being knit together. Note that expression. Being knit together in love. And unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Amen. See, I, I will briefly tell you what I have on my heart and then I may come back again once more before the end. See, Paul is writing to even some people who have never seen him. And he said, I have a great conflict. I, the modern translation would say, I have. Can someone say what is the word for God? Struggling. Struggle. In other words, he had such care for these people to whom he was writing. At whom he had not even seen. It is beyond me to know what is going on in his heart. But he, he, he was really caring for these people. When he wrote to Philippians, he wrote, I have you in my heart. Paul was that kind of person. He was that kind of preacher. What do you think about that? And his desire was their hearts might be comforted. That is the first he writes. So when we come together, when we come together Sunday morning, or two or three of us meet in our home, oh Lord, can I be a comfort to so and so? Amen. Is someone thinking like that about me in the church in Fairborn, Ohio? When we come Sunday morning, Lord, is there someone to whom I can speak a word of comfort? Please listen to that. Is there someone I can speak a word of comfort? You know, that is what Paul describes as prophetic ministry, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1 and 2. Now, to, for us to be in that place to comfort someone, I want to read to you one other scripture. And then he says, heart knit together. Is my heart knit together with someone? Is there a brother or sister here about whom I can say, my heart is knit together with that person? What do you think about Do you have anyone like that? If we agree that we all love each other. That goes without saying. But being knit together is something else, isn't it? Mm. And the paraphrase translation is made one. Is there someone like that for you in this church? I, I am sure there are. And it is about such people, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name. Amen. We quote that all the time. And after saying that two or three are gathered in my name, the next verse, if I remember correctly, says that if two of you are agreed, so he cut it down even further. If two of you will agree, do we have someone like that to pray with? It is true that we can pray long prayers with anyone. And I like that. Don't, don't get that. I, 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 know, I, I rejoice in that. But there's a prayer like the two of them agreed in prayer. Not to get what I want, but to the glory of God. Oh, who can understand that? The Lord is so good to us here. You don't need a large church necessarily. Thank God for large churches. But I want to tell you that the church which Jesus defined was that. And it was so in experience in the early, among the early Christians, they did not have large churches. They met in home. For the first 200 years, there was no church building. 
And during those first 200 years, the church spread more rapidly than ever since. I rejoice to say these things. I believe in those things. Now, we cannot replicate that today. I don't say that we should not have church buildings or anything like that. But the thing is that we don't want to miss the opportunity to connect with the spirit they had. So we can pray as they prayed. We can speak as they spoke. Amen. We can love as they love. See, this comfort, being knit together, if you want to quickly notice the rest of that verse, is the foundation from which you can have the rest of that verse. To know the depths of God. Amen. The mystery of God. Scholarly learning is one thing. And you can miss the whole thing even through scholarly learning. I have a lot of books at home. People have given me a lot of books at home. I have used some of them. But books can keep me away from learning also. We have to have great discretion as to what we read. What we call learning. I, I hope I am telling you the truth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Franz Savasisi, some of you may know. Franz Savasisi used to tell his friends, <laughs> what I'm going to say is against me. Uh, don't be a collector of books. <laughs> I give books to people. I, I have written a few books also. So, but I tell you, whether it is my book or any book, our first love should be the Word of God. And the learning process, as I described earlier, which is again my testimony, that learning process, you learn when you sleep. Yes. You learn when you go to bed. This morning when I woke up, the word came to me was Isaiah chapter 12. That's why I said I am going to study that scripture. I will read that to you. It's a short chapter. Let's go there. Isaiah 12. I say to him. <laughs> and in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, then anger is turned away, and thou wast comforted with me. Not that word comfort. See, that same word as we read in Colossians. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. And the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my soul. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Amen. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. See, I was meditating the last several days after the pastor uh, asked me to share this morning. I was meditating on Colossians chapter 2 where we should comfort one another when we come together. Mm. And that is why this word came to me, I believe. And in that day thou shalt say, O oh Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me, <coughs> thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Amen. You know, if we, as I told you before, we should know what we are in Christ, what our calling is in Christ, and confess that. Amen. We should confess that. God's anger is turned away from us. And, and the rest of this, this, <coughs> this uh, passage is that. And then you have comforted me. Can you think of the Lord comforting you? Amen. See? <coughs> um, going from here to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Say 
Second Corinthians chapter 1. See, would someone like to read for me slowly verse 3 to uh, verse uh, verse 6. Uh, second Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 to 6. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of compassion and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Yeah. Amen. What do you think about that verse? Mm -hmm. See, the Father of the Lord, uh, Father of our Lord Jesus, the Father of mercies, the Lord of all comfort. Mm -hmm. That's how it's See, and then verse 4, who comforted us in all our tri tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort world with we ourselves are comforted of God. Now, I, 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 my intention is to point out to you that for me to be able to share a word of comfort, this is what I need. I should have found my comfort in God. Amen. Uh, and it is a given. Anyone who is called to share the word of God, not necessarily as a preacher, but anyway, anyone who is baptized with the Holy Spirit, if we are called to this ministry of comforting one another, a husband has to comfort his wife. The wife has to come for the husband. And you can come forth in the temporal. But I want to tell you that this comforting one another probably, probably is the ultimate ministry. In the home. You can make any amount of money, it would not necessarily bring comfort. I know one husband, I heard it from his mouth, that uh, when they go to bed, he puts his uh, head, hand on his wife's head and blesses her. Amen. I heard that many years ago. I learned it from him. I did that <coughs> when my wife died. Every husband can do that. See, the thing is, any blessing you give to anyone, there are scriptures to what I am saying, any blessing you give to anyone comes back to you. So, husband and wife, that's, we read in uh, Proverbs last chapter, her husband rises up and praises her, which is equivalent to blessing. Now, to be in that place, we have this, uh, this understanding that in our troubles, we can run to the Lord. See, Hebrews chapter 2, the last verse says that he has suffered being tempted. He now rushes to the aid of those who are being tempted. In other words, Jesus is in a hurry to get to you when you are in trouble. But I should look to him, call upon him. I am thankful. I, I cannot tell you how thankful I am when I am alone. That all these years the Lord has kept me, but I am the more careful now. I have to be the more careful to be accountable to the Lord and to and the words I speak. I do not need the recognition as a preacher, but I need the the word that comes to me. I am well pleased with you when I speak. And when I finish speaking, when I go home, when I sit down with the family, with your wife, with the, your wife must be able to look at your face and say that, I am pleased with my husband. Amen. When I used to, when my wife lived, and when I used to share the word of God in the church when we drive back home, very often I used to ask her to advise me on what I spoke. And she was not a, much of a talker, but she helped me. God made a helper. That's what's written in, in James chapter 1, verse 
Genesis, you know. And the Holy Spirit is called the helper. Amen. You can go from there. <laughs> this is all too wonderful. How much time it takes? I, I, I have learned, I told you, all these years from the Word of God, the, the more I read now, the more I feel. And this is a very sincere confession. Oh Lord, what do I know? We don't have time enough to learn. I want to tell you that people, those of you who are involved in so many earthly things, the common voice, the most frequent voice today is that, I don't have time. A working man doesn't have time. But I, I, it may be boasting. It may be come across as boasting. I, I, the Lord forgive me. I worked as a and as an engineer for 25 years in this country and five years in India, plus going to school and all that. All these years, especially here, the Lord gave me the responsibility to work with the church for the past over 40 years. Almost every evening people were coming to our home for, for prayer for many years, especially when my wife came. People just walk in to pray and talk. I opened the word. Well, and I had night, some night meetings at my work also. See, but, uh, poor, the Lord sustained me with just enough health till this day. Oh, Not that I have outstanding health, but the Lord gives me grace for each day. Oh, See, I chose in my heart to say, I will not say I am too busy. I chose in my heart to say, uh, sounds like boasting, you should forgive me. Sounds, I chose in my heart to say, Lord, I have time for you. Amen. So I, I give this testament, and confession is made by your mouth. If you say, Lord, I have time for you, your time will be like the two pennies that poor widow put in. It is more than a million dollars. So you can be busy and still be not busy for the Lord. That's the best way. We are born for eternity, not for time. I rejoice in these things, though I have to speak briefly, keep going, that uh, uh, this oneness we spoke of, being knit together, is so crucial to learning anything in church life. If you will ever understand the Bible, the depths of it, even one verse, you should have at least one brother or one sister to, of whom you can say, my heart is knit together with that person. Mm -hmm. It is not the Greek or the Hebrew that will help you, which is helpful, but that is not the help. The help is we learn in the body. Jesus intended that way. Let's go one minute to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. See, I want to draw your attention. This Bible is not much use, so it is hard to go to the right place. I got this Bible here. Yeah. Bear with me. See, 379. See, note that expression. May read it once again in case you missed it. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That ye being rooted and grounded in love, not that grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. I have to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. See, that expression may be able to comprehend with all the saints. Almost 20, 25 years ago, an elderly brother, an Afro-American brother, 
uh, who was a pastor in a church there, uh, when he was with me, he pointed that out to me. He said, Brother Joseph, we have to comprehend with all the saints. Amen. And regardless of the different backgrounds we have, even doctrinal. See, he is not here one saint. The difference in understanding, even including doctrines, are inevitable. But what unites us, those doctrines are extremely, extremely important. What unites us is love. It's a matter of the heart. Where Christ dwells. So, this unity which the Spirit gives is what equips us to comprehend with all the saints, it's the breadth, length, depth, length, height, and know the love of Christ. And dear ones, this is my, my prayer. I, I have this prayer in my heart from time to time. Lord, fill my heart with your love. If we all believe in being baptized in the Holy Spirit, do you know what happens when one is baptized in the Holy Spirit? All of us know the, the doctrine very well. So I, I will say something extremely simple, which is not always said, I suppose. There is a verse in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. If you want not forget that. That's a verse I have quoted in my personal life more often, I think, than any other verse. For me and for others. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. God's love is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. That's precisely what happens when one is baptized in the Holy Spirit. Gifts are gifts. We are likely to focus more on the gifts. And I am not criticizing that. I, I, I or specifically wrote, I wish you all spoke in tongues and above all, uh, and especially prophesy. God wanted everyone to be prophesied. Incidentally, when I said, when you have testimony time, Reading one scripture can be prophetic, you know. In 1 Corinthians 14, where Paul instructs that, let the prophet speak two or three. And then he says, you can all prophesy one by one. And all may learn, he says, all. In other words, even if you are not a prophet by office, the entire church has the spirit of prophecy on them. If we believe that. If we live in the word of God, as I try to describe, I, 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 and the spirit may teach you better. I gave you my testimony. The spirit of prophecy is upon everyone who is baptized in the spirit. And when Jesus stood up to, uh, the, the first recorded preaching that Jesus preached was in Luke. And he was reading from Isaiah 61. I had on my heart to read that also. Let me read it at this point. Isaiah 61. So I told you, dear ones, we don't have enough time to, uh, in life to learn the word of God. I said that to impress on you. We should start with the children, with the children, with the children when they are very young. Jesus was only 12 years old. When he was able to say, I must be about my father's business. He was able to sit with the daughters of the law. By 12 years of age, we should educate our children to learn in the spirit in which Jesus learned. Not just by learning Bible memory verses. That is important. But learning the word by the heart is one thing. But to keep it as a treasure in the heart is another which the parents are responsible for, not necessarily the church. Who was Timothy's teacher? Before that. From a childhood, <laughs> Paul did not teach him when he was a child. It was the mother and the grandmother. That is the main job of the mother. Though you may be forced to go for work to make a living, that is not the primary office, employment of a mother. You may not let me preach anymore here. <laughs> That's okay. See, I told you in the beginning, I don't need the reputation. 
But mothers, I beg you to think about that. Even if nobody will tell you that. A mother is a mother 24 hours. A grandmother is a grandmother 24 hours. I am not saying it as a law. I am saying as a the spirit. There is no substitute for a mother. No substitute. Our churches don't teach that much at all. I, I was going to read Isaiah. Let's go there. Isaiah 61. Yeah, dear ones, if you don't remember anything else, remember this what we are going to read. See, 61. This is about Jesus. When Jesus was given, when he was 30 years old, after he was baptized, as after the Holy Ghost came upon him, um, after he was um, tempted, then he went into the synagogue to speak. And, and, to attend it. And when he stood up, they gave him the book. And then this is what he read. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, mm. to proclaim the liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I, I believe the Lord stopped at that point. You can verify that. But see, when, when he read in the synagogue, then at the day of vengeance of our God, now no, to comfort all that mourn. See, first we read that the Bible, the broken heart. And then we read to comfort all that, all that mourn. See, th th that is the specific ministry of the anointing the Lord had when he came. So I say again, if we have any ministry in the church or in the home, or with a friend, this is the primary ministry and that is to comfort someone. For that, we need to learn to run to the Lord for comfort in our trials. We need to say, Lord, I want to live for one another. Mm -hmm. It should start at home. A 14-year-old girl, a 14-year-old girl in our little church, in a prayer meeting recently, she spoke these words. See, in order to have, I noted it right here, in order to have the relationship of being one with believers, we need to be We need to love them. We need to look at them. That's what she said. We need to look at them as if they have no spot. As if they have never done anything wrong to us. What she was saying that was, I, last time when I was here, if I remember correctly, I did read to you Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 7, where the, the husband tells his wife, you are all fair, there is no spot in thee. And she was referring to that verse indirectly, and she is saying that is not only for husband and wife. I was not talking. She, it came from her heart. And she said, it is not only for husband and wife, but for brothers and sisters, because he, she quoted the words, there, since I will remember no more, then she said, we should be thinking, looking at each other as if they have no spot. No spot. You know, dear ones, to have this unity which I am trying to tell you about, from which only we can learn the heart of God and the mystery of Christ. We should look at each other. I have no criticism of any brother. I have no criticism of those who uh, dress this way or that way. If you can show something by example, that's great. 
but no criticism, no judgment. Is it possible to practice that? Can you think of your wife as if she never had any fault? What does it take? It may take hours of learning at Jesus' feet to begin to learn that. Many wives throughout the world live in great sorrow. I know personally, you know better. So every husband, if you, we have any ministry as a Christian in this world, and if you happen to be married, your ministry to the wife is the first, Amen. first grade lesson for the ministry. The Lord will immediately help you if you set your heart on that. I want to pray and conclude. The, the early Christian people, listen, were very poor people. They had persecution. They were a suffering people. And Paul wrote to them, the Lord is coming. First Thessalonians chapter 5, somebody, children quoted that. The Lord is coming. The dead will rise first, and we will meet the Lord in the air. Comfort one another with these words. Amen. In other words, the, the reminder that the Lord is coming is the great, was the great comforter for the early Christians. The last book of the Bible ends saying that, Behold, I come quickly. And the prayer is, Come, Lord Jesus. Now, in the end times, it has been said that the teaching and the preaching and the memory of the second coming of the Lord will fail. There will be many other topics to preach and teach. But we should not be failing to believe and confess, Lord, come Lord Jesus for me. That's a living faith. In the, among, the first, among the earliest Christians, the two major topics, the two major topics of preaching was one, the cross of Christ, the death of Christ, and the resurrection. The second, the second coming of Christ. These two topics are the primary topics of the New Testament, preaching and teaching. I, 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 I pray that I will not forget to remind myself, first and foremost, Lord, you are coming for me. Lord, you are coming for me. Amen. That will keep us holy. Yes. Yes. That will keep us wise. Yes. That will keep us joyful. That will bring God's word to us in a living way so we can help one another, comfort one another. There is much comfort needed. I conclude with that word. There is much comfort needed in the family life. Much, much, much. And the family life and the church life are two legs for a living Christian to walk on. We cannot have a ministry in the church unless we have the ministry at home. We cannot have a ministry at home unless we are faithful in the church. They are complementary. They are almost one. Paul writes like that when he writes about appointing overseers in the church, you know, husband and one wife, etc. See, such is the nature of the gospel. Such is the nature of church life. It's a joyful life. All we need is, Lord, I want to please you. Lord, not that I should preach well. I should please the Lord in what I preach. Whether you eat or drink, Do it as unto the Lord. Yeah. The older I grow, the more I fear. And I confess, I ask for your prayer. If there is one ministry I have in this life remaining, it is to pray. Amen. Lord, I thank you for this blessed, blessed brothers and sisters. Lord, I may have failed to speak as I want to speak. But I have trusted you, Lord. I pray that where I have failed, the Holy Spirit will fill in and perfect your purpose in this church, Lord God. That this church will be a church where they find comfort. Their hearts are knit together and go on to perfection, Lord God. Jesus said, 
that they may be made perfect in one in John 17. Lord, may they go on to that life, Lord God. May revelation come to us individually, personally. Bless you, Lord. Lord, I thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Dear ones, children, especially young people, if you want to remember John's Gospel, chapter 13 through 17, those are the last night of Jesus. John's Gospel, chapter 13 through 17. And uh, parents, Psalms 127 and 128. This will reinforce some of the things we talk today. The Gospels devote most space to the last week of Jesus, and especially to the last night of Jesus. That is what we read in uh, John 13 through 17. He loved them to the end. That's how chapter 13 begins. He loved them to the end. And the rest of that, so from 13 to 17, seems to be helpful to know what is meant by loving to the end. That is my desire. I want to love to the end. I, I ask for your prayers. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.